When I think of the topic of leadership, uh, the first thing that I like to establish is the fact that for me, there's a difference between management and leadership. I think management is doing, the, doing things right, setting up systems, sort of hurting people a little bit in a right direction. Leadership is choosing the right things to do. And that's what leaders really do. They make value decisions, and then they put that into the process of success. Uh, I think that leaders are very much concerned with the why things are happening, why you're going to make a certain decision, why we want to move in a certain direction, whereas management tends to deal with the hows, you know, how are we going to make it happen, how can we put this into play. So I think while they go together, there's a definite distinction between leadership and management. For me, success is a process, and I think that the key thing that you need to understand in this process is that it's ongoing. There's no singular outcome that's going to be more important than the others because as soon as you reach one goal, you're going to want to reset and go on to the next. But the thing that remains constant is how you go about your business on a daily basis. How do you treat the people that you work with? How do you choose the correct people to be on your team? How do you go about uh, looking at situations where you have difficulties solving those problems and moving on to the next step. Those are the things that we live with on a daily basis and that's what and coaching is all about. Coaching is about helping people work through their daily ups and downs uh, to achieve some success and then to reset and look at another success. Um, so I think for me I'm very process oriented versus outcomes. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about uh, this swimmer needs to win a gold medal in a certain event. My thing is to teach them to swim a certain time and to break that down into things that they can work on every day. So for Michael Phelps, it's not win eight gold medals, it's swim 403 in a 400 IM, and that then opens up a whole menu of things that we can work on that really will get us to that ultimate end goal, but we don't spend a lot of time focusing on the end. We focus on the process in between. The process of success starts with goal setting. And I don't think there's any successful business or, or team or organization who can move forward without knowing how to set goals and without following a plan to get there. When I talk to my athletes about a goal, we always start with the very end point in mind. And that's what I kind of call their dream goal or their long-term goal. Um, for instance, you know, I'm working with Turkish Swimming Federation right now, and our dream goal is to have someone win a medal in the Olympic Games. Now, that's a very exciting goal. It's something that really rallies people around the cause that we have. But to be frank, we are so far away from that right now that if that was our only thing we counted on, people would lose interest and motivation because it's going to be a very long road to get there. So what you do to make that plan happen and to find a way to bridge the gap between where you are today and where you want to be in the long term is you set up intermediate goals. In swimming it's very easy because we're always on a calendar where there are certain meets, there are certain things that we look for and we can say okay if you want to swim one minute at the end of the year in a hundred then at a meet halfway through the year you want to be able to swim 102 if you're swimming a 104 right now. You can kind of work your way in incremental steps towards a larger goal. So while I think it's very important to have a very emotional sort of dream type goal, it's equally important to have those steps along the way so that everyone can feel a sense of success as they go. Because it's a very long process to achieve a meaningful goal. The one thing that your long-term goals do do is they provide motivation. You know, it's very hard for somebody to get out of the morning and come, get up in the morning and come down to the swimming pool to swim 151 in a 200 free. But it's very easy to get out of bed when you think, one day I could be Olympic champion. So while these long-term goals have a purpose for emotional, you know, they're an emotional catalyst for change, they're something that I think once they've kind of ignited the process, you then shift your focus back to the more short-term goals. Um, 
one of the things that I've learned as a coach is you set up your plan, which are basically your goals, and then you're going to have a road map that takes you between these destinations, and that's what happens on a daily basis. I think that the key to success for me is being successful in a daily plan and focusing on what I can accomplish right now. You know, it's very easy to get off track sometimes by thinking about, well, what's coming up in a year or two or a couple months or next week or what just happened last week. I think you have to keep your athletes focused and I have to keep my focus on what's happening now uh, because that's the main thing that we can control. So it's very important to me to have a very clear plan for what we will do on a daily basis, to have that very um, sort of uh, fit in with our plan in the midterm and the long term and to have the athletes know that this is an important part of their development. Sometimes I think it's easy to lose track of things when you get tired, you're doing a lot of tedious things, you don't see a lot of immediate success. And that's when I think you keep referring back to your plan, you keep referring back to your long-term vision, and that sort of makes the whole process work. I think a key for any leader or anyone in an organization is your attitude about what you're doing. Uh, I can have the most brilliant plan and we can have the best corporate structure and we can have everything in place for success, but if people don't come in with a positive attitude towards what's happening, none of that will work. And that's the job of the leader. The leader has to, number one, by example, you know, set the tone for what's happening in their area and they also have to help others get on the same page in terms of attitude. I know with my swimmers, the ones who are the most positive about what the work is, regardless, are the ones who do the best in the long run. And I do think that's something that's critical for a corporate culture or an athletic culture. You know, I'm always telling my kids, you need to start doing possibility thinking. Instead of thinking, oh, that's impossible, no one could ever do that, you have to start asking yourself questions. Uh, the questions I like to ask are, you know, well, how would somebody from Turkey win a gold medal in the Olympic Games? Then you can start answering those questions, and as you do that, you start to get a more clear picture of what the path might be for somebody to do that. Now, it may take a very long time. It may be very difficult, but at least you have a starting point, and then you can work your way back from this dream goal to where you are today and start to see a way forward. And the thing that really makes this process meaningful or makes it uh, exciting will be the mental attitude that people bring to this work. I think it's most important to me as a leader to treat the people I'm working with well. And that's what all great leaders are going to eventually have learned that it's how you treat people, how you get people to buy into your vision, how you work with them that's ultimately going to create the success of your program or your company or your campaign or whatever you're working on. Because at the end of the day, it's a collaboration. It's not one person ordering people around. You can get things done that way. But for people to really buy in and really give a full effort and really believe in what you're doing, they have to believe that you care about them and their problems and the things that they're trying to accomplish. And I think this is critical in leadership. Uh, the leader has to not only set the example, but he has to treat people the way he would want to be treated. And I think once that happens, you can build a team. And ultimately, that's what a company should be. It should be a team, just like a football team or a swimming team. They work together, they strive, they succeed, they fail, they solve problems, and they go back to the drawing board. And I think if they have the right attitude and the tone is set from the leader, they have an excellent plan and goals that they're trying to accomplish, uh, virtually anything can be accomplished with the right mindset.